How's it going? This is Hellbent and welcome to Auto Hotkey GUI short tutorial number 14. In this one, we're going to be looking at the move subcommand for the GUI control. So I've already gone ahead and created my basic template that we're going to be using. So we have a GUI that's 500 by 500 and I've made its background black. So what we're going to need is a control that we're going to be using to actually do our moving. So let me just go ahead and add in our control. And we're going to be using a button for this. But this applies for any of our controls. And I'll go over some details that uh, you'll need to know for other types of controls. So unlike our all of our other controls where before we just typed in X10 and Y10 and that, this time what we're going to do is we're actually going to create variables for our X, our Y, our width, and our height. And this way we can just manipulate the variables rather than trying to manipulate the numbered values for our X and Y and so on. So I'm going to create a variable called X1. And once again, this has to do with the naming of variables. Make sure you name them things that you're going to be able to use easily, that you know how to recall what's doing what. But for us, we're just going to use generic X1 for our X variable. And we're going to set its value to begin with to 10. We're going to do the same Y1. We're going to set its value to 10. We're going to have a width 1 variable and we're going to set its value to 100 and then we're going to have h1 and we're going to set its value to 40 so we're going to make a nice big button all right now what i need to do is go ahead and place these values in our x our y our width and our height and if I haven't covered this before, the way we use variables inside of this, because it's not expecting an expression, what we need to do is wrap our variables in percentage marks, and then I'll just go ahead and place them in. So we have our x1, our y1, our width1, and our height1 variables. Okay, with that out of the way, next what we need to do is we need to associate a variable with our control. So that way we can use the GUI control command. Now, there, I said this before, how even if we don't use a variable, there is a default uh, variable that's associated with it. I think button would be button one and radio buttons would also follow along with button and everything like that. But you have to use the order that it falls in in your GUI. So the easier way of doing it is just to go ahead and create a variable that's associated with it rather than trying to use the other uh, the control ID that's built into it. So we're going to call our button but one okay nice generic name and then we need a label that we're going to use to actually execute our movement so G and we're going to call this um, we're going to call it moving button so our label is going to be called moving button I'm going to go ahead down here before I forget and I'm going to add in that label moving button and I'll add in its return right away Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to just put some generic text on this, and our text is going to say, press me. <clears throat> okay, let's have a look at what we have. So here we go, we have our button. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that way every time we press on our button, we're going to make it move 50 pixels over to the right and 50 pixels down. So inside of our moving button so each time we press on the button it's going to execute the contents of this label and as soon as it jumps into this label what we're going to do is we're going to take our x1 variable and we're going to add 50 to its value we're also going to do the same with our y1 variable we're going to add 50 to its value next we're going to type in our gui control command and its subcommand is move now we need the name of our control, which we named button1 or but1. And then we need the thing, the what we're changing. So in our case, uh, you know what, let's, let's do something else as well. Let's change its uh, width1 and its height1 as well. So what we'll do is we'll make our button... Um, 
let's see. We're going to make our button 20 pixels wider each time we press it, and we're going to make its height 5 pixels higher each time we press it. So now we need to put that into here. So just like how we did up here, we're doing the exact same thing. So we're going to actually just, to save a little bit of time, we're just going to copy this. Because we're basically just going to be typing this exact same thing in here. Okay, so there we go. We've said that we want to move to the new X one, the new Y one, the new width, and the new height. So we'll go ahead and run this. And now each time we press on it, the button moves to the right moves down, it gets wider, and it gets higher. Okay, so that's the first little um, demo. Now let's try something else. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that way our button is kind of like hovers up and down. So to do that, we're just going to get rid of all of this stuff here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with a loop. And then, and then inside of this loop, we're going to create two more loops. And we're going to have each of them loop 20 times. So our main loop is going to be an infinite loop. And then our inner two loops are going to be 20 each. So it'll cycle between them, basically. All right, now let's decide what we're going to do. So what I'm going to get it to do, our button to do, is I'm going to get it to actually move up and down. And I'm going to get it to increase in its width and its height. So it'll look like our, our button is, is hovering but also throbbing. All right, so we're going to take our Y1 variable. And we're going to... Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to add 2 to it. I'm going to take our y variable, and each time it runs through this loop, it's going to add 2 to its value. I'm going to take our width, and I'm going to do the same with that, the exact same thing. So I'm going to change its width. I'm going to add 2 to the value of its width. And with its height, I'm just going to change it by 1. So plus plus. So there we go. Each time it runs through the loop, the width, uh, the y-axis is going to grow by, or it's going to move down by two. So it'll start. Let's say it starts here. Each time it goes through this loop, it'll start moving down. The width is going to get wider each time, and the height is going to increase by one. Now we just need our GUI control, our move subcommand, our button one control, and the three things that we're going to be changing. So we have its, its y-axis, its width, and its height. And we'll just add in our values. Now, because this script is uh, doesn't have that much going on in it, it's not going to take it very long for it to actually run through this and cycle through it over and over and over again. So what we're going to do is we're going to slow it down a little bit so that way it uh, looks a little bit nicer. And we're just going to add a little sleep. And we're going to sleep for mm, about 22 milliseconds. That should probably be good. If that's too fast, we can always adjust it later. And then we're going to do the reverse. We're going to take all of this and we're going to do the reverse for the next loop. So I'm just going to copy and paste this in. And instead of it adding to its value, we're, this time we're going to subtract. We're going to subtract. And we're going to minus, minus. And I think we're good. Okay. And this is going to segue into the next part, which is some other controls. We're going to actually need to do something else in order for it to get rid of distortions because when we take like for example if we take an image and we were to run this as soon as it starts playing around with its width and its height it starts to distort our image so what we need to do in that case is we need to redraw it each time it does this move and we'll cover that in a second um, here you know what I don't like that position so what we're gonna do is we're gonna position our button a little bit closer to the center so I'm gonna put this at 100 I'm gonna put this at 
Uh, let's go to 300 with that. Okay, I think I'm I'm okay with that. Um, nope. Okay, there we go. It's a little bit closer to the center now. So when I press this, it's going to enter into this loop, which is then going to enter into this loop, which is going to start adding to its y-axis, causing the button to appear to move down. It's also going to make the button wider and taller. And it's going to do that 20 times, and then it's going to do the reverse another 20 times before it jumps back to the top again and repeats the process. So let's go ahead and start it. And there we go. We have a throbbing button. Okay. Now, like I said before, a um, second ago, if we're using an image or something like that, as soon as we start playing around with the, the width and the height, what we'll end up is having a distorted image. So what we need to do is redraw it each time. So we can accomplish that by using the <clears throat> hide and show subcommands. So we're first going to hide button 1, and then we're going to immediately, and then we're going to immediately show it again. Now, there, even though this happens really, really quickly, you will start to notice a little bit of flickering. So just be aware of that once we start playing around with these values, there is some flickering and I purposely use the black background just to show so that way you're aware of the flickering so it doesn't come as a surprise to you because basically we're gonna make our button disappear and then immediately we're gonna have it show up again but there is a amount of time that it takes between the two of these lines so here we go and we can notice that flickering but there's not much we can do about that Okay, that's it for this part. Um, let me see, was there anything? I think there was one more example that I wanted to do. No, you know what, that's right. Um, one of the questions I've been getting uh, a few times is, uh, I've had a few people that have actually gone ahead and while they were waiting for this tutorial, they've actually gone ahead and learned how to do this move thing, but they're having problems with trying to reproduce this. So this is basically using that command, but it's, it's more of a logical problem. It's more of the logic of the program, this part here, than it is about actually moving the control. So I'm going to do a, another quick tutorial, which will be the next one, where I'm going to cover the logic of creating something more like this. And I'll cover a few other things, like... Um, uh, for example, a object uh, like a, let's say if I want to make a star background um, that's constantly looping over and over again, I'll create, I'll show you how to do that and a few other things like maybe a screensaver kind of thing. But uh, that's it for this one and I'll see you on the next one where we'll go over a little bit of this in more depth. Have a good night and I'll see you on the next one.